Okay, let's call a meeting to order. Is there any uh, adjustments, changes, additions to the uh, agenda as presented? Uh, I do have one addition for a uh, to approve the posting for the rec coordinator position. Rec coordinator. Anything else? Um, not that we should approve uh, put it on tonight, but we probably should make sure we have it on our regular meeting about the uh, uh, the ATV crossing that issue. That is request. Yeah. Anybody got anything else? You heard my concern earlier, which we'll take up during the minutes. Yep. So. That's right up now. Uh, we got the what's the board's pleasure on the meeting minutes of March 5th, which was town meeting day and the meeting minutes for town meeting and March 18th, our regular meeting. What's the board's pleasure on those? Vote independently or as a slate? The only minutes I have in front of me is from July 16th. Is that some other, that's related to something else? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I do have the meeting minutes if you they didn't were have a chance to review them. Yeah, I, I don't need them. Okay. Just, can, just one thing. Sure. I move the whole slate. Okay. Got the motion for the slate, both of them. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to discuss what I said at town meeting. Okay. Um, the word, especially in Washington, was omitted. Uh, the way it is written, it says, what has not happened in American politics, and it goes on to, is compromise. I did say, especially in Washington, and I did review uh, the, the video several times to double check. I think most everybody at the uh, town meeting uh, realized, I said, especially in Washington, and I wanted to put forth a point that Johnson was better than Washington, and we had the ability to compromise amongst ourselves. So I would like to amend the minutes uh, for my statement at town meeting to include, especially in Washington, after American politics. Is that acceptable as a friendly um, amendment? Yep. Yes. To, well, I guess it's your second, it, so. Making, making, yeah. Making Any other discussions on the meeting minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, opposed? And Rosemary, you have anything or just the orders? Okay. Unless anybody's got any questions for Rosemary, we'll move on into the administrator's report. Okay. Uh, so first up, uh, Shane Spence has volunteered to serve as our Green Update Coordinator. Uh, and I think it is in a great position for this year and, and hopefully we can Keep you around for a couple more years into the future. And, uh, I plan on sticking around. Yeah. Great. Did you get the uh, from the uh, was it conservation commission? I got. Um, I had talked to Lois, I, um, and she had sent me over some notes from okay. previous years. Um, the the Green Update website has a bunch of information okay. on it, um, and. I, you know, I've done it before from one side of things, so just kind of remembering how we've done things in St. Albans in the past and, and thinking, you know, I, mm -hmm. I've got a few ideas that I think we could do here, so um, yeah, if okay. I'm so lucky enough to do it, then. Good. Very nice of you to step up to volunteer. Yes, thank you. Terrific. Motion to approve. We got a motion to appoint Shane. Do we, we got a second. Any other nominations? <laughs> Quickly hearing none. <laughs> All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Rec committee. All right. So uh, we might want to, we do have the handout for this, and I can talk a little bit about it. Heather is going to be here to speak about this. Okay. You want to come back to it? Um, we can move on. Okay. Just Mar uh, Marvin Awards. And we'll come back to that. So the Marvin Awards. Uh, the Marvin Awards are up for uh, the Lamoille County Planning Commission. There's, mm -hmm. We have the option of nominating 
um, up to two for, for two awards, one for a project and one for a person. Mm -hmm. um, something, sometimes these are given out as kind of lifetime achievement and other times they're given for uh, more specific reasons. Uh, Does anyone have any? Oh, I do. Yep, go ahead. Yeah. Um, my suggestion to this board is I think there is a person in Johnson well qualified for the personal award and I'd like to nominate Eric Osgood. Oh God, no, no. <laughs> I'll second that. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Any other nominations? <laughs> I actually got, uh, received a, an email from someone, I don't remember who it was now, but they were nominating uh, Lois Fry. That and I think it would be well deserved. Well, I do too, but I nominated you. Okay. And I second. <laughs> <laughs> and I nominated <laughs> Lois. <laughs> Any other nominations? And no. Hearing none. Okay. All those in favor of Eric? Name going forward, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. <laughs> All those in favor of Lois going forward? There was no second. <laughs> hey, I'm not sure if there was or not. Yeah, uh, there was no second. It's out of order. Okay. <laughs> <It's out of laughs> Eric, don't be so modest. You, uh, Thank you, guys. There's probably nobody around any more deserving than you are. Well, it's very appreciative. Uh, I, I do appreciate it. That's did not expect that. Uh, we also have an opening for any project. We can nominate. A project? Any More projects project. in the community that's happened in the last year? Last year we nominated and they did receive at least a, uh, yeah, honorable mention was the Maple Fields, but we haven't had anything. I can't imagine. I can't think of any project we've had. Nobody. Does it have to be a building project? Could it be no, event? it could, could be. Could it have been Harvest Festival or something like that? Could, could it, have, you know, could it? It could have been an event of yeah. some sort. Yeah. But I, don't, I would think the most important project in policy terms now is Northern Vermont University's conversion to from Johnson State to Northern Vermont University for for this community and our well-being. Pretty hard to argue with that one, too. Ooh. I think we've got some thoughts on how we could put it in words. We've got a wordsmith down yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, are, what are the board's thoughts on having Northern Vermont University nominated? I like that. Well, hearing no, no others, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? There, we got two to send forward. I had to see seconds. <laughs> Mine Road. All right, so a very brief update on Mine Road. Um, we have received a permit application for everything that's currently in our right of way. Um, what I'd like to do is handle that kind of administratively, just like any other permit application that we receive, uh, and handle that kind of it with myself and Brian Krause. Uh, and then if we have any further issues, we can bring it before the board, but that creates an avenue for, uh, if there's appeals, if there's anything else, we're, we're, the board isn't involved hands-on in that way. Uh, and so I think, I think it'll be procedurally a little bit better, but um, there hasn't really been any change up there other than we've received the permit application. BASF has been very cooperative uh, and helpful in kind of keeping communications open with Tom. Uh, mm -hmm. Things have been moving pretty well since our last meeting. Okay. What exactly is in his permit request? Anything specific or just? Uh, it's, it's basically for all the things that we know about. Okay. Uh, you know, it's no, he's not asking for any changes, but he, he's listing everything that's there and that, okay. and, it, and it doesn't really detail anything that we didn't know about. Uh, it's a little more specific on 
um, some of the sites that we had vast had told us about that were a little bit further up the trail that we couldn't mm -hmm. easily reach by a truck uh, you know that you could reach by a snowmobile uh, and those are detailed in the permit application that includes the power line the the structure that's in the, the right way power line the two structures that are in the right of way um, the collection tanks are outside the right of way but it's the lines that run to the collection tanks and the lines that run uh, both up from the pump house and down from <laughs> further up the hill good direction thank yeah. you so the board in agreement let the two Brian's take it take the lead on it mm -hmm. okay good thank you Next up, uh, you've got the public notice and uh, resolution on uh, meeting dates, times, etc. Um, you know, it, it mentions, it describes our, uh, excuse me, our newspaper of record. Um, everything that we regularly have. Uh, the major change being that uh, it's going from third Monday of each month to first and third Monday of each month. Brian, there's no longer a transcript. Yeah, thank you. What's the board's pleasure on this? Prepared to approve and authorize the chair to sign with that change of removing the transcript? So move, Mr. Chairman. Second. Any more discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? I'll just I'll pop in sometime and sign in. Yeah. All right, uh, next, the end of the public works operator probationary period. Uh, Damon DeGregorio has uh, finished his probationary period as of today. Uh, uh, receives good marks, well, doing a good job, uh, and we'd like to keep him on, so we'd like the board's permission to end his probationary period and uh, give him the uh, compensatory salary increase. Which is 50, 50 cents. Mm -hmm. So moved. So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Got a second. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Congratulations, Damien. All right. Next item is really informational. Um, the dr new draft of the state road and bridge standards it has been made available. It's had a couple revisions. It'll have a couple more. Um, this is going to be uh, very important for us moving forward. And at our next meeting, uh, we will want to provide comments for LCPC. So I'll provide a written summary uh, of my concerns and give the board a couple updates, but uh, we, we really do need the, the board to read and familiarize yourselves with, uh, with these standards. It's going to be, we're going to have to adopt something like this, and it's, yeah, it, it's going to be it's very important that we get it right. What's the timeline on this? Uh, it's on the first page, uh, the, the Walton County Planning Commission's update on this, that uh, the deadline for written comments is April 26th of 2019. So we do have our next meeting for this. 
Um, the next meeting that I'll be at, um, anything we can provide before April 9th, the Board of Directors at LCPC will be able to take up. April 17th will be the Transportation Advisory Committee, uh, which will be after our next meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, and I serve on that committee, so I'll be able to advance our concerns through that avenue also. Um, and then we can also take our concerns to the April 23rd LCPC meeting. And if we want to have our own comments uh, separate from LCPC, we can also raise those. Uh, but the, especially the last two will be our, our kind of our best avenue at having our, our voice kind of amplified by uh, regional committees. Mr. Chairman, yes. uh, this document, uh, didn't Duncan Hastings have some concerns on this document? Yeah, he sent out an email, and actually I was going to ask if he's approached you, because he expressed... I've had a brief conversation okay. with Duncan. Um, we're going to want to have Duncan serve, uh, kind of attend our next meeting when we have, get into this in a little more detail. Um, Duncan will be especially helpful with the history of the last time the... Uh, state standards came out, Johnston was able to modify our local standards so that they met the minimum requirements of the state but also addressed our local concerns and our local interests. Um, that process is not exactly the same as it was the last time. So we want to make sure that we have a little bit more concern with the state standards than mm -hmm. Uh, we might have before because we might not be able to modify them in the same ways that we did before. Uh, but there isn't particularly clear direction on what might have, what, what modifications will be approved. So we're going to have to, we're going to do, the plan is we'll do our best with the state standards. Then where the state standards don't meet our needs, we'll make the modifications and then apply for approval. What? He expressed to me was all of the uh, modifications that we were able to negotiate none of them have made this standard that's correct and some of them were uh, he thinks a real problematic and and I, I you know I personally don't know enough about this in the details yeah. but uh, it would be very valuable to have him as part of the discussion uh, so we will have to approve these We'll have to approve something. We don't need to approve these at our next meeting, okay. but any comments and any changes we want to see. We'll have to go out next meeting. Right. Okay. We'll have to submit our, anything we want clarified, if we've got questions about a part. I've got a lot of questions in different parts and I'll, I'll provide a summary. Uh, but I've got questions about things that I think are a little unclear uh, things that are going to be judgment calls, and I want to make sure I understand whether is it a judgment call based on some standard that the state has, or is it a judgment call that we can make? I'm okay if it's a judgment call we can make, but if it's a judgment call that the state's making, and I don't know what their criteria are, uh, I've got a real problem with that. That they either need to. If it's a decision they're making, they need to provide a lot more clarity than they do in a couple sections. Are the regional planning commissions coordinating in their responses so it's just not helter-skelter? They're making some effort to. Um, you know, it's, we're kind of funneling up, uh, just like we'll go work with LCPC to try and amplify our voice and especially where our concerns overlap with other, other town concerns. But if there's something that we feel strongly about and LCPC isn't going to address it, we'll also bring it up. So the biggest points will come from, you know, an amplification of multiple regional planning commissions all saying mm -hmm. the same message. Uh, you know, we're getting the League of Cities and Towns involved also. And, uh, you know, again, where we all intersect, we'll get amplified through them too. But. Uh, We'll also address it individually if we've got an issue that isn't receiving as much attention. So we'll have to be conscious of this for the next meeting on the agenda. This is going to be a good amount of time. Probably, yeah. Yeah. So just make sure we don't overload the agenda yeah. too much. So again, it, it, 
very important that we that everybody has read this and is familiar with it before our next meeting. Uh, today, what we're doing is you'll be chairing that meeting. That. <laughs> Let me cross out understand. Yeah. <laughs> you going to skedaddle on that one here? Yeah, I'm going to be uh, out of town, unfortunately. Some foreign land? Nashville. So I've got a quick update on the Evergreen Ledge Cemetery. Um, we've had a Brief conversation with our attorney. They do feel that this is the most reliable uh, way, the, the, the proposal to file this as a, uh, as a, a, a quiet title claim, as the most reliable way of changing and updating the, the records of this, that we've been doing maintenance, we've been conducting it. Um, you know, uh, that they think this is the best avenue for uh, making this claim. I, I've got a little bit more detail for Doug, uh, but I'll really have to forward an email from the attorney for mm -hmm. uh, for those finer details. But uh, kind of the suggestion is that we might start this process a little so that it spreads over the, the two years, uh, the two financial years. Um, I know Don Sargent's pretty concerned about us getting rolling on this, and we, you know, there'll be some wait time in terms of making filings and uh, procedures, so it doesn't have to all come down at once. Any so, idea how much it's going to cost us? The estimate, the for a similar project in another town, uh, it costs seven thousand five hundred. Okay, good. What? What is the big driver for that cost? Uh, the court appearance. If there's any one single thing that costs the most, it, it's the court appearance. And that's what, Superior Court? I believe it will be. We've been treating this as like it's belonged to the town right along, right? We ought to just continue and just, until somebody challenges us, we're, we're the owner. Well, we're spending $7,500. We've been maintaining it like we owned it, but we had not been selling any. Like who's, like who's going to even cause us to think about it? Why did we have to spend $7,500? I'm with Mike. I have a hard time justifying paying $7,500 for this. It's a, it's, if, it had, if it was another matter, this has been a cemetery for well over 150 years. It's going to be a cemetery for 150 years. <laughs> I can't imagine somebody's going to come along and say, "What are you doing, burying people here or selling plots here?" Um, at, to, if we had seventy-five hundred dollars to spend, this would not be where I would put it. Can the agency or the organization that owns this be kind of reconstituted and re become active again, so that it's not us but it's them? And if that's my first question, and completely jumping to another thing area, is uh, maybe this is something, since the court appearance is the primary driver of this, why don't we think about hiring a local attorney that would come down from Morrisville rather than from Burlington, you know, for, for this specific project? Uh, I... But I, I would consider the first one you know, we, we have, how, how, how can we get people appointed to this? Or can we? Is it possible, you know, that since the association has no members, how are they to be replaced? I had asked about that. I'd have to go back into my notes to give you kind of their rationale of why it wouldn't work well that way. But... That I, was I volunteer to be on it to save the town $7,500. Yeah. You, you got a shovel you rent out? <laughs> um, I believe that we'll have to go to the state legislature in order to get appointments made. Good grief. Why does everything have to be so stinking complicated? So, yeah, I mean, uh, the, the, 
Going back in the email record, it looks to me like the sergeant's first approach to the town, Donald Sergeant and his wife, uh, in the fall of 2017, about purchasing lots in this cemetery. Um, and as he noted recently, he's just turned 80 years old. He's really interested in getting this matter settled. He has family buried there, which is why he wants to purchase plots there. Um, no one's going to build a house there. Um, <laughs> I am interested in seeing that we move forward with authorizing the sale of at least two plots to the sergeants tonight. Um, if I'm being reckless, then somebody but yank me back. But I, I, this just seems like it's ridiculous. I think we've already authorized the sale, but it was contingent upon getting the ownership question answered. Yeah, that, that is, the status is we, we signed on a, an agreement with the sergeants that <clears throat> when and if we have the right to sell the plots, they have the right to purchase them. They, and they are set aside for that purpose. But it's contingent and waiting for us to have the authority to sell them. On another note, I think we ought to look into a lower priced attorney. Just to throw that wrench mm -hmm. in the works. I, I just noted. <laughs> I, 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 mm -hmm. I think Doug's idea about maybe contracting with, uh, if this really mm -hmm. is the best avenue for acquiring the property, looking at contracting out this particular service with another attorney, uh, I think that that seems like a pretty good idea. We don't have any exclusivity clause with this attorney, do we? No. So why can't we do that? Um, how much are we yeah. thinking we would save having a local attorney? I don't know. You'd have to ask. Because a lot of the work would still have to be done, right? It's just the travel time? This, in, if I was to look at this, I would say, I don't think you're going to have to appear at all. The difference in rates between Burling attorneys and local attorneys are probably $100 an hour. Mm -hmm. um, and I think this will be just pushing paper. You know, it, it would be a, uh, <clears throat> if it's a quiet title action based on adverse possession, they would have to show that uh, uh, we've held it for 15 years openly, notoriously under claim of right. Uh, and so thinking we were the owners and the, uh, uh, with that being it, with that being our claim, you know, and I don't know who here would testify that our doing work was necessarily that, you know, it's more that we haven't, you know, I don't know what it is, you know. Um, it would require that kind of testimony, but you would put that kind of paperwork in, make the allegations served by publication, and, you know, the see whether or not the court allows you to fit through the wicket. <laughs> That's what I think. What are we afraid of that's going to happen if we start selling plots there? Yeah. What if we, like Mike said, just assume we own it, start selling well, them? You'd be in line to exhuming these people and burying them some other place, uh, perhaps. Why? Like, who's going to compel us to do that? Well, I don't know. Vermont Digger? <laughs> <laughs> They would seem well equipped based on the name, <laughs> but I just don't see that as a realistic possibility. Me neither. I say we just move forward like we own it. I mean, again, if we're being just really reckless, explain it to me. But I don't. I'm not seeing it. Well, I voted against the the last motion because I thought you were getting ahead of it, and I think you're even further ahead of it now. You at least had caution before about uh, when we own it, we'll give it to you. You know, you know this is like we'll give you a quit claim deed to show where you could be buried. The, the last member of the cemetery association came into the town offices, left the paperwork with us, and said, "This is your problem now." And there's, we've been maintaining it, we've mapped it, we've done all kinds of things with this. We've, have we cleaned graves in that? In that mm -hmm. grave? We've cleaned yeah. graves. The adverse possession period, as I understand it, is 15 years. Great. I, <laughs> Has it been 15 years? 15. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. 
back in the 90s. We this year's moved forward like we owned it. I just forget I, about spending 7,500 bucks. I hate to be rash, but I, I'm just not seeing you it. You have to be rash once in a while. No. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask a question? Oh, what, please. What was the, in the, the bylaws or whatever the organization that dumped it on you had? I mean, usually if you have an organization, you have a dissolution statement. I'm not sure. That's a point. I don't believe that they did. No. And there's also, uh, even if there wasn't, there are state statutes where we will automatically assume it responsibility. Was, they were created by state statute. Uh, That's so right. The legislature established the association. Why don't we get with one of our legislators? Because they're always introducing some bill down there. Just tacking on to something else. And give us his cemetery. Really, there has to be a simple way to do this. That's probably the least simple with the legislature, but it's the cheapest. It's also it's also housekeeping for them. If they understand it, you know, you can you get their attention, you can get it through. That was my primary suggestion on, on how to handle it would be to take it up with our legislature. Get your son on that, would you? Get on it. <laughs> You're a day late and a dollar short. Just had the whole discussion with him yesterday. I couldn't. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure Brian had this discussion with, with our attorneys. Our attorneys are excellent. You know, they really are. Uh, and I think they came back and said this is the best way even considering that because you had your reaction to the legislature. Attorneys are a fox in the chicken coop, and you know that. <laughs> they, they have plenty of make-work projects. And if anybody's going to pay them, they're glad to take your money. <sighs> oh, God. Are any of those people from that association still alive? None of them. No. no. <laughs> the last one is the one that brought in the... I'm the sure they room. said it was ours. <laughs> I'm almost positive. That's what I, I heard. I think that that say. was their intent. That was their intent. Next thing on so the agenda. So we need to uh, provide <laughs> some direction for Brian on where to go. I'd like to give the sergeants a bill of sale on this. I'd like to resolve this for them. Yeah, I mean, I think it's really just a matter well, of fairness. I'm sorry. Sir, no, no, no. Can we, though, given what we've... I can explore with the attorney what the consequence is of us committing to the sale. We signed something else. Here we go again. I would strongly <laughs> recommend us doing something like that without at least the attorney's advice, even if we're going against the attorney's advice. <laughs> tell them I'd call tell, another, we should call tell them what attorney. we're doing before we move I'd, ahead. I'd call on something attorney. like that. They're committed into this big deal here, and they don't want to see it go. And so uh, I'd call somebody else. I... Should we run it by Jim Barlow? Oh, jeez. If you recall, Jim uh, was one of the other attorneys we considered, and uh, he won't or had a court. generally favorable opinion on it. He wouldn't take it to court, but he would no. give us legal advice. Probably only charge us a hundred bucks or so. <laughs> that might be well spent money. Amen to that. I just yeah. don't see this getting contested. Last time I'll say it. <laughs> <laughs> so again, I'll, I'll I can exp I can explore bringing in uh, in a kind of the the. Two avenues that I see from this is one, really a little more detail, but what are the consequences if we just move ahead and start selling plots? You know, what's really gonna happen? Um, okay. And two, I'll investigate a little bit more about can we hand this off to uh, an outside attorney like Jim or, or something that can, if Jim won't appear in court, so no, we'll no. have to find somebody else. But The most he could provide is an opinion for us. Um, well, and, you know, we, maybe you could ask, authorize him to check with other local attorneys and see if that, if they'd be interested. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with being cautious, but sometimes you can be too cautious. It, I mean, 
anything we do that delays this longer, Don's no spring chicken. But he's really we should have an answer by our next meeting, I would think. Be terrible. Does the legislature, um, what do they have to do with cemeteries? Well, because the commission was established by the legislature, they can undo the charter. Or for that particular cemetery? Yeah. Or for all of them? Uh, for that one. particular cemetery that particular association. Mm -hmm. Wow. I, hmm. We think. Oh. I, it's, our attorney has recommended a different course of action, so we didn't spend as much so that's time the and money. So that's could undo it. That's we think so. The thought, yeah. It would be great if that could happen. Yeah. Bring it up on the floor. Hold on it, you're done. Don probably won't live until that could get done. <laughs> that's a good point. Right? None of us will. Yeah, none of us might. It has to get taken off that board. Yes, yeah. it's got to get yes. taken off the board. Yes. And written up just in a certain format. So what's the direction for Brian? We need some kind of... Get a cheap reading. I think you've given three things. I think that uh, he should uh, have Linda find out what the options are in the legislature. Is there any reality of, of, to, to moving that ahead? He ought to check with uh, the uh, local attorneys and, and Jim Marlowe. And you ought to check with our attorneys about the consequences of just pushing ahead with that. So that would be three things. Yeah. Is that the board agree? The last one would probably no. cost us five hundred dollars. Nat has reservations. Me too. You got reservations. I say we just need to go right ahead and act like it's ours. And then still start working on the legislature. I, I don't mind getting a, a reading from our town attorney. From our personal, from the, the town, as Brian said. Mm -hmm. To just give us one more chance to convince us that somebody's going to come along and say, you don't belong there and you got to, you know, exhume people. And our attorney was aware of the the legislative route. Yep. Uh, and this was still their recommendation. And why? Well, of course it would be. <laughs> what do you think? Really? Uh, Kyle is... um, Sorry to put you on the spot. Yeah. Yes. No, I mean, I just, I, I am in agreement with, I want to get this figured out, um, but I am very aware of Brian's real hesitation. I mean, I'm, I'm sensitive to people with more knowledge than I <laughs> about what the repercussions could be. So that's not helpful. Um, I guess I would feel more comfortable with one more opinion, and then once we have that opinion, a little more clarity from the first opinion, then making a decision within the next you know, meeting. I'd like to hear just what Mr. Barlow's got to say about it. That's it. So we're okay with the the three court kind of the three pronged attack. I'll look at each of those options. No, I have a more detailed no, report. No, we didn't I'm have not, a majority. I'm on not that. happy with the third with the three. I think we just need to have the one, Mr. Barlow. As far as that, and plus the also looking at the legislature, but I don't. I don't think we need to bring our other attorney in for another reading on this. Because he's pushing for that full-blown $7,500 deal, and he knows about all these other things, too. What good's it going to do? I don't, I don't think these attorneys need $7,500. I don't think this motivates them at all. I think that what motivates them is doing a good job and what, they, what their estimate is based on their time and experience, you know. Um, I think there are different rates between Burlington attorneys. They have areas of expertise. Uh, this is a real property law. You know, I'm familiar with 
with these these cases. I've been in the Vermont Supreme Court on a particular case like this. Uh, you're going to have to pass through a sticky wicket on whether, even though there's no opposition, you're going to have to get past a judge saying, I find that you meet all of these 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 factors. And, and that'll be probably tried on, just done by affidavits. You know? So that's why I think it's worth uh, having uh, someone else look at that. Uh, but that's just yeah, they, they provided a pretty good rationale to me about why this one and I, mm -hmm. uh, the crux of this is, as I understand it, this is the most reliable and predictable way to achieve our outcome. That going to the legislature could be faster, could be longer, uh, the timetable on it's not as, for our purposes, not as predictable or, or reliable. Uh, that, do we even have $7,500 to spend on this? Where would this even come from? <laughs> We've pretty much spent yeah. out our... It, it's really, yeah. it really has to come after July 1st. Yeah. Um, you know, that w we certainly couldn't pay the bulk of it this financial year. As tight as we are for money, we can't spend that kind of money. And we probably wouldn't because by the time you get into court, you got to get on their docket. Yeah. Oh, I mean... I mean, on one hand, I, I don't think anybody's going to contest it. I could think we could just go ahead and sell the plots. On the other hand, we have town attorneys for a reason. Um, we pay them to give us advice to keep us out of jail. You know, when we don't follow their advice, well. Sometimes it's better to ask forgiveness than ask permission. <laughs> we do. We do pay, but we don't surrender our judgment either. No. No. And I no. think it's a matter of judgment. Just move forward wrong? like we own it. So that would do. This would be a good record for someone to, to you know, challenge us. <laughs> so, well, was that a motion? It's a motion for me. Man. Move forward like we already own it. Do we have a second? Second. Got a motion, second. Any more discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. <laughs> I heard you vote. You didn't vote? Yay. Yes. You vote in favor. Motion passes. We'll go forward. Mm -hmm. the first time? I, I mouthed something. <laughs> oh, I thought I heard you. I'm sorry. Uh, we could probably go back to the rec committee. Yes. Uh, so, circling back to the recreation committee, the recreation committee has a proposal to sell uh, some advertising space and sponsorship for Little League. Uh, Heather, you were going to speak to that? Yeah, we have juggle these rooms around late at school. Um, so, Recreation is looking to um, raise some money for the Little League program because one of the, uh, other than the Ski and Ride program, it's the most expensive one that we have. And every single year we, we, we struggle with paying for this program. So what we'd like to know is one, if the town has a um, policy on advertising, and the other thing that we came up with is we'd like to know if we can sell some banners. Um, and basically, it'd be similar to what you see at maybe the Montpelier Fields, at the, um, I don't even know what their team is, on, the, on Route 12, where they sell advertising space. They also do it at um, uh, the Burlington um, the Fields there. Not anyone in really the Loyal County is doing it yet, so I think that okay. um, yeah, so I think that it's um, an opportunity that we we may be able to um, capitalize on, I guess to say, for lack of better terminology. And I have, I know that we can put uh, six banners on each backstop, um, and I've uh, measured them out and I've worked with um, great, uh, great big graphics. And I just kind of need to know if that's something that we could move forward with, if there is um, any type of advertising that we wouldn't want to see. I don't want to offend anybody. And um, it's kind of, I don't know if you've got the, the plan that I'd like that. So that's... Yeah, 
And this would be a proposal that would support the Little League. Yes. Do you ever foresee that there would be a need for the soccer or the other team? Um, you know, honestly, I, I, I wouldn't say yes or no at this point, but I would, I would given history, um, soccer, basketball can almost sustain themselves. Um, the two biggest programs that we have that, that really don't sustain themselves at this point are our ski and ride program, the nature of the beast. It's very expensive to put kids up there. And we put 98 of them. Um, and then this program, it's, I hate to say it, it is somewhat of a dying sport because of spring soccer, but we still have about 45 kids that participate every single year. Um, and just to register one Little League team is $175 with the county. That's before any equipment, that's before and a uniform that's before anything. So um, I wouldn't necessarily think that we would have to do that moving forward with, with uh, soccer and basketball. We also, with those two programs, we have a tournament that we do some fundraising at um, for the soccer one. We sell concessions during the, a large tournament and then during the winter months we hold a very large basketball tournament that kind of helps offset it. But for baseball, we really don't, and softball, we really don't have anything with that. So this would kind of help subside with not have holding a tournament. Does that answer the question, Eric? Or? Yep. Do these banners go up and down at the beginning of the season and the end of the season? <coughs> It's yes. got a proposal would, here for mid May to mid October. To mid -October. Would so they would be the Legion Field as well, or just no, Park? just Mill Park. Um, who would be the morality police to determine? I think that the what? rec committee should be the morality police. I try. I mean, this is for area businesses, right? Correct. I don't know any area businesses that want to put up offensive messages, but um, if anything. <laughs> well, I mean, like if if a Marlboro or a, a, a Miller Lite up here wanted company. to put up banners, you probably would not allow it. I guess but what about have... like Coca-Cola? <laughs> <laughs> or one that's more relevant, good stuff, I think, the, the pipe shop in Waterbury. You know, what if they want to do? Uh, that's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> or we could have a political candidate. Oh, Would you allow political candidates? You know, I mean, I don't know. Oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> I guess that answers. It's not going to be permanent. Anything else? Oh, most political candidates are permanent. Yeah, they're not going to be permanent. Most political candidates are not permanent. <laughs> Unless you're in DC. Is that the truth? What's that? It seems like some of them are. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, uh, it's a crying shame. To me, it seems like the, the intent is in political advertising. The intent is area businesses, local businesses. Um, I think you said there's, there's limited space there for yes, there's limited space. six each backstop. Six each backstop. Um, so I would so maybe 20 companies total. The, the, the softball field, I wouldn't suggest putting anything up there at this point until that was completed. Yeah. So I, I mean, I don't know, a little bit of common sense. I think we're not going to send a solicitation to a to a to a head shop or a porn shop. Um, we're going to send solicitations to whole angles. Tangles, uh, Tatro Construction. <laughs> so I think I, I don't know, a little bit of common sense. I think. You want to move it as presented? Yeah, I yeah, move. And, and they are all the same size. Um, the the banners were um, three and a half, about uh, two and a half feet tall. So I have to read it. Three by two and a half. So Heather, it's going to be. It's going to be through your approval, correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay, 
so if we can't trust you, we can't trust anybody else. So we need to just move forward with this. Move is proposed. I'll second it. Got a motion second. Any more discussion? Uh, I do have one question. Sorry. Okay. Uh, the one thing I don't see on here, Heather, is uh, how to decide who gets which field. Um, if we have somebody's preference, are you going to try and follow preference, or is it going to be solely at the discretion of REC to place them? I think if somebody really had a major preference, we would try to accommodate whether they went to the, the, the field up by the pavilion or the major's field down by the um, REC storage facility. But I think that for clarity, I would, um, I think REC should be left. Uh, first decision. come, first serve, too. Kind of, yeah. I mean, I, and, you know, this is going to be new, so I don't even, honestly, I don't know if we would fill them, but over the course of a few years, it'd be great to see if we could. Do they renew every year? Um, the renewal, the, so the renewal, it depend, there, so there's a couple of, for the banner pro project, there's a couple of different ones that I came up with. One of them is for um, banners and sponsorship on the backs of the, the the Little League t-shirts that we do, um, we haven't ever done that before. So that depend, depending on the price structure that they wanted, they would get a banner, their name on the back of the t-shirt, and um, a link from our website to their website with their, their company logo on it. The next level down would just be t-shirts and um, website advertising, and then the base, base would be uh, website advertising from our website to, to pointing to theirs. We put their logos on our website. Mm -hmm. Heather. And renewable after three years. Okay. Heather, um, this is more of a, maybe a request than, or, or a suggestion. Um, I know that we're, Johnson Works is always talking about how to get people from the rail trail um, area to, to, da to downtown. our downtown, so it would be great if some of the banners that are really visible could be our Johnson downtown. But like, maybe, you know, maybe um, downtown businesses could have some Get priority, priority. <laughs> if, if they want to, you know, if they want to sponsor. I don't know, maybe somehow we could Talk. I don't know. <laughs> That's my selfish uh, <laughs> Johnson Works side coming out. Uh, Doug? Uh, kind of an abundance of caution. I would just thought of something we're going to discuss later. I would like the headline on this to be, or the lead, Town of Johnson Recreational Little League. Yeah. That makes sense, though. Or you're good with that, Heather? Okay. So just making sure. Yes. yes. Right. Yeah, the heading. Okay. Any other comments? You all set, Brian? Yep. Okay. Anyone else? All those in favor, say if I was saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Go forth and bring money to Johnson. Tacho's already promised to write a check. <laughs> you have to ask how much it was. <laughs> 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 Don't worry about it. That's, that's For you, a special price. Let's see. <laughs> it's a pretty comfortable First feeling, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Then yeah. yeah. <laughs> you'll get it for two fifty, Greg. <laughs> Thank you, Heather. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I know. All right. That was pretty clear. Uh, the next thing we've got is the merger proposal. So, so I hope everybody. I have extra copies of all the merger proposals, and uh, you received scoring sheets. Uh, does anybody need a copy of any of the merger proposals? Yes. No. Oh, uh, yes, I do. Thank you. 
Uh, I'm all set. I'm all set. I don't need one. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Let me guess. I know. I can guess. Greg, were you here for anything in particular? Or? No, I just thought I'd come okay. down and call time, you know? Okay. Thanks. Well, thank you. I might learn something if I'm not careful. <laughs> <laughs> you probably did. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take a look at it. Thank you. You're not looking for someone to handle attorneys, right? I am. Uh, yeah, I'm good. The next one is uh, one more. Oh, boy. Thanks. <laughs> and then I'm going to go ahead and leave the... So those that are wondering maybe what we're doing here is uh, as part of the question for the merger. We were going to hire a consultant going in with the village. Uh, we went and put it out, posted it. Uh, the first go around, we got no applicants. Uh, the second go around, we did get three. The select board is, this is our first time at looking at these, and hopefully um, we'll have some feel for the direction we want to go, but then it is going to require a joint meeting with the trustees, and uh, maybe we'll select a consultant to hire and so go forward. Really yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, the, the range was huge from uh, the scope of work, even though the RFPs, were, it was the same thing, the scope of work that they would provide and the range of costs was from a high end of 32000 down to a low end of 9300 I know uh, Brian and Meredith have both done their first stab at it, and you know, like I say, it's the first opportunity for the board. So you want to take the lead? Sure. Um, so we've got you've got the evaluation criteria here for the different ones. So uh, kind of the we can walk through it. Uh, I provided you mine, uh, but. Looking at these, um, kind of one by one, let's run through Center for Governmental Research. Uh, that's the CGR, it's the, fu the future of the town and village of Johnson proposal for uh, municipal mergers. This is our most expensive proposal, uh, coming in at a fixed price of $32,000. Uh, their experience is pretty extensive. Uh, they have experience with, I you know, exactly this. Um, that they have experience working in Vermont, they have experience with municipal mergers. Uh, they are, they're, they're very well qualified. The methodology sound, seems sound. Um, well, I really have, I have, the methodology especially, I, I have nothing but praise for how, how they're describing this. Um, you know, and that kind of makes sense when we discuss this as a, the most expensive, the $32,000 something. That it, it's detailed and thorough, but... Uh, we're, it's what, we're getting what you, it, we can see where the money goes. Um, you know, I, I, okay, so the, the, does the board have any comments on, on this one in particular? Or do you want me to run through them and then we'll loop back around well, for a discussion? Run through your analogy and then, uh give an opportunity to each board member to okay. what their thoughts are. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of my summary with what's in. Um, Ascent Consulting, in the next group. The Ascent Consulting, uh, they, they, pretty good, they had uh, pretty good experience, uh, but 
and they have a good experience working in Vermont, but our specific needs for a municipal merger study, they didn't ha have a, a lot of direct experience with. Uh, their methodology, though, sounded, sounded like they had a, a pretty good idea of the process and then how they were going to tackle it. The timeline and everything uh, makes sense with what, with what our needs are. Again, though, their cost uh, is out of line with what our, our goals were. Uh, and, and their cost is significantly higher than we can afford. Uh, this is another one-man shop, uh, but coming in quite a bit more expensive than we had uh, proposed or were looking for. Uh, the last one is Sedman Hill Consulting. Can you hold on a sec, Brian? Yeah. What was the oh, lump sum of 19 k Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Stedman Hill was the final. Uh, they have the least experience. Uh, it is another one-man shop. Um, A lot of their experience isn't, you know, uh, they describe a lot of experience with transportation in particular, but they, they have been working with municipalities and they've been working with municipalities in Vermont uh, doing kind of, this isn't their area, but this is not completely unrelated to what they, what they do. Um, their methodology sounds, uh, you know, I, I like some of the other ones better, but I, I didn't see anything terrible about their methodology. I thought that this one, there was a couple statements in here that sounded to me a little like they might have, uh, they might be uh, judgmental a little bit, that they might have an idea of where, of an expected outcome, I guess would be. You know, it didn't sound like they were engineering the study to come up with a particular outcome, but that they had an idea of what, where it might be headed. Um, so their methodology, I thought, was good, but not great. Uh, the timeline is, uh, I think, pretty ambitious for uh, one person shop, but didn't have anything that really that stood out to me in terms of was definitely going to work out or definitely not. Uh, and their cost was pretty close to what we envisioned. Uh, only a little bit higher at just over $9,000. Okay. Uh, that's kind of my summary of my findings. Anybody want to go forward with their thoughts? Three. I, I have a question. Yeah, sure. It must have been uh, 25 years ago or so when somebody studied whether these two boards should merge uh, and made some recommendations. And I, I don't know what happened to the report. You know, maybe somebody could look at that and see if it, maybe some answers have been provided already. Or who did it? Or did it? Howard and George Pearl. Oh. And, and they both admitted that it was not thorough or in-depth at all. No, there was somebody else that wasn't there. No, Howard, <coughs> Howard and, and George had it for one year, and they, they punted that year. They came back the next year and said they thought it was okay, and I thought it was the same equivalent as the punt they had the previous year. To answer your question, Linda, when I was a village trustee, and it's actually in uh, one of the village uh, reports in the village, meeting. Uh, the trustees had done kind of a cursory study on it and we came, I say we back then as a trustee, the trustees came to the conclusion that it was advantageous to the village and not the town. That's where the study I read. Well I seem to remember there was some woman who was hired to do it so I, I don't know what that was. but. Um like those records ought to be somewhere. I don't ever recall that. The trustees had uh, discussed it at length many, many times. And, uh, 
when the talk was, and as a trustee, the trustees didn't think the town would go for it because it was advantageous to the village and not the town. So that's why it was never brought forward. Can we even consider these two that are <laughs> uh, super The expensive? village has said that they're not going to pay more than what their voters had approved at the last village meeting. Right. Uh, so it's 4,000. We would cover the rest of the bill. Um, we could go out for grants for these, but a lot of the grants for these would be the, the grants that I can think of that these would be eligible for, uh, the light industrial park would also be eligible for. And mm. uh, so a lot of these we already have applications in, or I'm working on them um, for another project. Uh, so we'd have to change our priorities about where we want to you know, seek funds for first if we were going to try and get a grant to, to fund these. I would say the land industrial park would be the priority. Yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Anybody else want to share their thoughts on the three proposals? Obviously, we're not going to make a decision tonight, but we'll go forward with the trustees at some point. But if we come in with our who we're leaning towards. Mr. Chairman, I think everybody knows how I feel about it. And I'm probably the cheapest one on the board. And uh, we had talked about graduate students uh, doing a study from the UVM and Dartmouth. Uh, that would be my first choice. If we couldn't get one of them to do it, I would not support paying any more than the lowest bid because we're going to have to pick up $5,300 of that. But that's a good lead in to that option of the students. Um, if we do decide to go that route, how much we'd have to, the scope of the RFP is going to have to be drastically changed. Yes. Is it would be the, I think it's a pretty good option, but it would not produce the, the scope of work would not be the same as what okay. we took out for this. So we would have to start back and rewrite the scope of work. And we would do that in consultation with the department chair at whatever university we were going to work with. Um, as you know, I, I went to UVM for my master's in public administration, so I'm familiar with the department chair and the rest of the department there. Uh, you know, I know that we could bring people I know that they're interested in working with us on this and that we could bring them into uh, kind of come up with a new scope of work for this. It would be that scope of work is going to be difficult to write and get everybody's consensus on while we're also still meeting the needs of UVM as an educational institution. Um, I think. I, I like the idea. Uh, I think it's a pretty solid one, but it's we have to know that what we're getting for that is not the same as the RFP that we went out to bid with. That uh, it is, in a sense, apples and oranges. That we're it's not that they're going to do this report for free. It's they're going to produce a different report uh, yeah. on a similar topic, but. The report's going to be pretty different. And uh, that report, what kind of credibility would it, and this is an opinion question, but how much, what kind of a credibility would it, do you think it would have with the voters? Because uh, it would be a much reduced uh, piece of work from what these consultants would be producing. It might not provide the answer that the voters are looking for on should we merge or not. Well, if we go in with that focus of a question, we can certainly provide an answer for something like that. Uh, the kind of broad-based just present us with information and, and present us with a huge range of information with limited conclusions is really not going to be what they're well, well suited for. Right. Uh, but something a little bit more detailed along a narrow, more detailed along a narrower scope 
uh, would they'd be better suited for? Uh, how much credibility does it have? Um, you know, while I was there, we wrote uh, similar consultation documents and research projects that were used in uh, uh, Winooski and Colchester and uh, Waterbury. Uh, so, while while I was there, we did similar projects for other towns that uh, those towns found very helpful. I, my take on this is that I think that the people from Stedman Hill and the, the principals there in Ascent are, are really, you know, bright people with good credentials, but I didn't find that, that, that uh, they've been in the area enough to, 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 to do the work. Um, I thought that uh, we, it's really a roll of the dice. It would be uh, a gloss on the information that they would need to, to, to uh, put together. Um, the other, the CGR is highly qualified, they're expensive. Uh, I thought they were the only one directly related that could tell us what the minefields, the economic minefields we're gonna be walking into would be. Uh, and there are plenty of them there. So I, my opinion is, is that uh, uh, to take them up on the, uh, in the event our proposal does not align with the town and village's expectations, we'd welcome the opportunity to discuss an alternative approach and budget because they know what they need. They may not be able to do that. I don't think that the other ones would, uh, would, would buy us the product that we would want. We would have, they don't have enough depth to tell us the minefields that are there. Sorry, Doug, which one were you just referring to? I think the, 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 the GCR. The GCR. Or, excuse me, CGR. Okay, okay. Uh, I think that one is, if money was no, that would be the one to go for. We don't have the money in our budget, uh, but that is the only one that's gonna give us the warnings about wh what is there. You know, they're, they're big issues. Fire department, mm -hmm. electric department, you know, viability. There's some, in my opinion, some inquiry to be made in public you know, works and things like that. Uh, you know, and that's, uh, you know, it, it might be good for the town to quantify what the village trustees were thinking was true, you know, uh, as far as the economics of who would benefit and stuff like that. I don't know who's gonna benefit. We're thinking of it like why two and when you could do it with one. But you know, it might be a, kind of a Brexit question, too. True. But the village has the ability to do certain things at this present time that the town would not be able to do had we been in charge of the village. We wouldn't have certain luxuries that they currently have and which would cost the town a considerable amount of money. To what? Subsidization. Okay. Okay. I guess uh, from my point of view, I pretty much align with uh, what both Brian and Doug have said. Uh, it, it certainly is a uh, you get what you pay for type of scenarios here. Uh, CGR is definitely the most experienced. They've dealt with, they have experience dealing with merging of actual town districts as well as uh, dissolution of uh, villages uh, in working in numerous states. Uh, they, uh, their methodology seemed very uh, professional. That was what came out for me, is it, it was very professional. Their timeline was a little bit I think long for what we'd be looking for. They're estimating six months, which I thought was a little bit excessive. Uh, Accent Consult, uh, the concern I had is a one-man show, uh, limited experience working with the communities. They had not done any mergers, but they had some experience with utilities, working with Department of Works and stuff like that. With St. Albans, uh, again, methodology was uh, probably workable. Timeline was probably uh, you know, the couple of months, probably appropriate. Uh, the Stedman, really no experience. Another one-man show. 
no merger experience, some very limited municipality experience. Uh, the one flag that went up for me in, the, in their methodology is the very first sentence is, uh, is a preconceived opinion that just looking at it from the outset, he's determining that it would make sense for the town and village to merge without even doing any of the study yet. And I, I would be a concern when the trustees read that, they're not gonna, that's gonna be a flag that comes up for them. Um, you think? I think. <laughs> Their timeline was a little bit, like uh, Brian mentioned, you know, maybe optimistic. Uh, when I did rate the three, the CGR rated the highest for me, if money was no object. And uh, the second place would be the Stedman Hill. So if, if money is a factor, which I'm sure it, it will need to be because the town will be on the hook for most of it. Um, if we were gonna go forward with any consultant, I guess I would support Stedman Hill. But, but I have some serious reservations and not really sure if that's going to get us what we want. I don't have anything new or, or different to add except to question, I think Kyle started out with that question, is how do we, have we even budgeted to be able to accept the $32,000 bid? I mean, do we have, there's no money we in the budget for that. That's $32,000. No. It's a deal breaker right there, so. Uh, they, like Doug mentioned, they do have a provision in there for altering the scope of work, mm -hmm. um, right. which we could either do with them or we could write a new scope of work and put it out again, uh, kind of what we're comfortable with. Like, I guess I, and Doug's advice was really good that we uh, work with them to redefine the scope of work to see if we can come up with something that's affordable for us at least. I don't think mm -hmm. it makes sense to discuss proposals that we can't afford. Mm -hmm. So the suggested time to meet with the trustees was before our regular meeting, right? Next. That's kind of the, the best opportunity that we have uh, without <coughs> putting this even farther out right. and uh, farther into the future. So some of the thoughts maybe going forward into that meeting would be, you know, on Doug's suggestion, see if we could renegotiate with a, a different uh, package with CGR. Or I mean, obviously the, the cheapest one is probably where we're gonna be landing at. I don't think the trustees really care what we're gonna want, as long as they don't pay more than $4,000. And they're bound by their votes. That's right. And uh, if you followed their last minutes, they were very adamant uh, mm -hmm. that they are not going to spend more than four thousand dollars. I don't think they legally can. Their their voters were clear. Right. That's fair. Unless somebody brought it up at a village meeting tomorrow to increase the amount of money. Mm -hmm. There's no way they could do it. Have they already received these proposals? Yes. Yeah. They probably the, not they're at more or less the same point we are. They might not have had as much opportunity to discuss them as we have. So, if you do students, do, do they get paid? Uh, it would. The way I would envision this, and we'd work with the uh, department chair over either at UVM or Dartmouth or whoever we went with, but I'm most familiar with the program at UVM. Uh, the UVM has a a uh, capstone project for the, the students where all the students that are graduating on a given year will <clears throat> kind of work together on a singular research project uh, that has a practical component to it. So it's something very much like this, that it's, uh, you know, the one I participated in was uh, for Waterbury getting ready and this shows how long they've been trying to get Route 100 rebuilt in the downtown. But uh, we wrote an <coughs> economic development proposal or an economic sustainability proposal for them for their downtown while Route 100 was going to be closed for the better part of a year. 
uh, things that the town could do to help encourage their businesses, you know, shuttles, extra parking, things that they could do to do all this. So it was a, a, a research project and the practical, applicable component with it too. So could they be? Could you go with one of these companies and also have the students do it and then cross-reference? It depends a lot on what we did with this, uh, on what we did with one of these consulting companies and how that worked out. I mean, that would that could be something that we would talk to them about if they were, if they'd accept some, you know, help from the students uh, or not. It certainly wasn't anything that's covered in one of these proposals. Yeah. Any other board members' thoughts? I, I'd be in, <clears throat> if we have a meeting coming up before the next, uh, or before our next meeting we meet with the trustees, I would think it would be good for Brian to have a conversation with these people and say, is there any, any way of, you know, thinning this down? And if it was, would it, do you think it would be viable? Uh, you know, there'd be good enough information. I mean, he, he'd be getting out a little bit ahead of, we haven't even had this discussion with the trustees yet, but. Right, could but go. we might want to tell them that, you know, the price is a non-starter, you know, mm -hmm. uh, we're ahead of it, but, you know, we want to explore this possibility. We should be cautious about getting too far ahead of the trustees, though. <laughs> What did you say, Nat? We should be cautious about getting too far ahead of the trustees. Because yes. I, yeah, I thought it's a bad idea, but I'd be conservative. I don't think it would hurt it, what Doug said to, to talk to that company to see if they could sharpen your fence a little bit and uh, come down on the price. So I don't think that would be really getting ahead of anybody. Do you? Um, how would the trustees interpret it? It's, it's, yeah, I don't, I don't know how the trustees would. Well, really, it, it doesn't make any difference to them, does it? I don't know. Because they're only, at this present time, they're only going to put in, they're only going to pony up $4,000. We would have to, to give the rest anyway. Right. The town would. Yeah. So, I don't think that's underhanded to, to go back to the, to them to see if they could change it a little bit. I wouldn't say it's underhanded. I would just say that they often see things much differently than we than we do. Okay. That's all. But I, I don't. I'm not against it. I, I don't think they could, they would see anything that we were trying to pull over on them on this myself. But I think we should, if we were to do that, we should tell them that we that you know the, we liked the proposal. It was too high. They they had had this sentence in it, and we've invited them to. We're, we're going to talk to them based on that invitation. Sure. Just bring them right in on it. Matter of fact, like type thing, and I don't think there'll be any problem at all. So what the board's saying is ask Brian to reach out and also let Meredith, have yeah, Meredith share Meredith the trust she used it. Yeah, be as transparent as possible. Sure. Okay. Well, we're pretty transparent with the camera rolling anyway, so. <laughs> yes. That'd be interesting. Uh, I wonder if anybody else has any in the audience. Well, actually, yeah, opening up the audience. Uh, anybody have any thoughts on the three consultants? What about yes. taking the methodology that you think is really great from that CDS, I guess it is, and taking it to your uh, professors, the people that you're connected with, and saying, what do you think about this? Is this something that could be done with students? <laughs> I think that that would, that we'd probably want to incorporate some of that if we were going to work with them of, you know, showing some of the methodologies that we'd read and seen that we liked. Uh, yeah. That still may be beyond what they're capable of with their time and, and resources. Yeah. yeah. I think that the student opportunity is wonderful. We've had great experience in the Conservation Commission on short projects, mm -hmm. but the timing of it is, mm -hmm. is very crucial. They're only there for certain periods of time, and they have deadlines. 
and a project like this could be something here. that would have to wait till September. Uh, it would almost certainly have to actually wait till next January before they would undertake it. Yeah. But I, I think you know I agree that the the um, the scope, the whole presentation of the one that's the highest is is clearly the best. No question in my mind. But I also remember that at town meeting, you know, it wasn't unanimous that we should spend a bunch of money doing this. And I think you have to be very cautious about anything that exceeds the eight thousand dollars that people had in mind because that's what had been talked about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good point. Mm -hmm. Great. Did you guys check references from these folks? Any of them? We have a the first thing I do call some of the other folks they work for <coughs> get their opinions. Because they might say, say this guy that's cheap so did a great job and very happy. And the guys that were expensive, they might think, yeah, they did a good job, but they were too much money. So, you know, I do a little digging. Yep. So we're going to get one. Good point. Is there a thought process that merging the village and the town could save the town money if it happened? What's the main driving force? That's not it, right? That's the question that right. we're looking for the answer. Is there benefit? I'm sure there are pluses and minuses to both. Staying the way we are, merging, maybe some form of merging, um, but weighing it all, does it make sense to to merge, and that's a, that's the answer we do not have. We're looking for. And that's been a question for decades. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe this can put it to bed, one way or another. Structurally, the village has a charter, and uh, the charter says they're responsible for sidewalks. The town does highways. Who has the curb, storm drains? There, there's a complete breakdown in terms of responsibility there. Oh, it's yours, oh, it's ours, you know. It needs to be straightened out in, in some fashion. It doesn't need to be here, this way. Um, but, uh, you yeah, know, that's vital infrastructure that, that, that there's too much gray area in. Sometimes it's theirs, and sometimes it's ours, and sometimes it's dowers. <laughs> Okay, so any, I guess I heard the direction for Brian is to maybe reach out to CGR, um, sharing that with Meredith mm -hmm. for the trustees. Was there anything else that we wanted to get out of this before we have a joint meeting? Are we okay with the joint meeting? Yeah. Yeah. Assuming the trustees agree to it before our next regular meeting. Which is when? That's when we generally have it, isn't it? Move forward. Well, well Eric's there. Oh, I'm not there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are our other topics at that meeting? Is it just this? For the joint? Yeah. Uh, for as I know, this would for be the only. joint meeting, I think we're only going to cover this. Oh, well. What's the date of that? Of what? 15? We don't know yet. We're, we're well, well, our our next meeting is on the 15th. Yeah, if yeah. we did it prior to our regular meeting. Oh, like at 6 o'clock. Yeah, 6 o'clock. If that's agreeable with everybody, then we can float that. And I I think you and I floated it with Meredith and Gordy, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they're probably to some degree aware of it anyways, but... Uh, Tentatively, we could schedule the six o'clock for the joint meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, you want to wrap around to the rec coordinator position? Sure. So, we could pass that down. So, I've got a draft posting for the direct coordinator position um, and I want to take this out, post this on our website uh, and then post 
paste, slightly condensed version. Uh, you know, that really gets down to the highlights and provides a link to this <coughs> document uh, to put in uh, seven days and uh, the news and citizen. I'm um, also going to list this with uh, the Vermont League of City Cities and Towns and the Vermont Recreation and Parks Association. And the rec committee is all on board with this? Uh, the rec committee has, members, a couple of members of the rec committee have seen drafts. The, the rec committee has not met since, uh, has not met since, but they've been, you know, the, the chair has been informed. Uh, but they were involved with the drafting of yeah, it? Yeah, they were, they were involved. Okay. And the skateboard, or skate park committee as well? The same. Yeah, okay. You know, they, they have not met to approve the final draft, but they're aware of it. Their concerns were heard earlier on, and uh, they're aware of the plan being that it's going to go before the select board tonight, and the select board, with the select board's approval, uh, it'll go out. Any thoughts from the board? Looks good. Mm -hmm. Prepared to so move? So Got a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second. Any more discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, seem to be saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you. Great. Okay. Uh, see now live. We got your letter. Uh, and thank you for coming today. I think the board will have some questions. Um, sort of the way, the different layouts that we have for, for committees, boards that are under the town umbrella um, are varied quite a bit. Um, we have the, uh, you know, like the rec committee, we have the uh, skate park committee, those uh, conservation commission, et cetera. They're sort of totally under our umbrella. They, they operate to uh, basically uh, under our direction. Uh, there are a couple of groups like the library and the uh, planning commission that are under the town's umbrella, but they uh, are, have some direction provided by state statute that, on how they operate and things like that. Um, we also have the historical society, which uh, while they're under the town umbrella, they're also a, uh, a, a nonprofit organization and uh, our 501C. And they are able, and the reason they did that was, uh, well, two reasons. One is so they have the ability to raise funds for their mission to support purchasing the building and artifacts, et cetera. Uh, the other reason is they've had thoughts that they may or may not. They, they haven't made the decision yet on whether they would like to go out on their own, out from under the town's umbrella. Um, we have a committee of two select board members and uh, two historical society members that meet, and we are trying to come up with uh, letters of understanding between us and, and how to operate and all that. Their operating budget is, you know, under the town uh, structure, but the uh, and, uh, umbrella. Uh, there's, there's benefits for every structure, uh, and there's obviously some benefits for being totally outside the town umbrella. Uh, but there's also protections that come with that umbrella that you don't have. A, uh, if it's under our umbrella, obviously we work very hard to make sure they're successful. Um, supporting them in any way we, we can. If it's outside of the town's umbrella, it's a different discussion. And then we are looking out for the, the town's uh, interests. And so if the outside entity wanted to use a, uh, one of our facilities, they, had to, they have to enter into a facility agreement, uh, use agreement with the town, and uh, you know there could be conditions on it. So. Laying all that out, um, we did get your letter. Uh, it 
sounds like from the letter that you have formed a nonprofit organization called Tuesday Night Live uh, Inc. And you're in the process of getting the 501C. Um, it was a little bit left up in the air whether you're still on, um, I mean, right now, the way it stands, we have a Tuesday Night Live town committee and we have a Tuesday Night Live Inc. Um, outside entity. Um, are you still members of the town committee or are you, have you resigned? I don't know that a committee was ever formally created around Tuesday Night Live, was it? We've always operated under, there was a committee, yeah. Um, Who were the members of the committee? The three of you, after uh, okay. Cal had yeah, I mean, got done. Our main intention with, with this, you know, similar to the historical society, was, you know, to create, you know, first of all, it's growing, as right. we all know, you know, and it felt like this would be the best way to keep things structured. Um, fundraising. You know, it was a big thing for us. We've got almost 1,500 followers on Facebook. When you form as a nonprofit, you have the option of creating a donate now, you know, on that page. Mm -hmm. um, there's also grant possibilities with becoming a nonprofit that were really appealing. Um, you know, looking at the Vermont Arts Council website, there were close to 30 uh, grants, you know, created through them for similar kinds of events around the state that could almost double our budget, you know, just kind of create a more, like a, a broader musical option, you know, bring bigger events to the stage. So, you know, those were really our main priorities. And as far as the financial component of it, the biggest appeal for us was just having more direct access. You know, as we are really in the throes of planning this event, you know, we're, there's so much incoming and outgoing, and not having direct access to those funds makes it slows the planning down. You know, we're looking for more efficiency. You know, we had no idea that something like this was going to raise so many red flags or cause so much suspicion. I'm not sure, you know, where all that's coming from, and I'm I'm here to have a conversation with everyone so that we can all just kind of get on the same page. And I don't know. I, well, that's. I like that's why we're glad you came in, uh, because there would be a process we would need to go through if we were going to be starting to separate. Um, okay. I don't think we know the pitfalls one way or the other, which is, I mean, we've been working on this a couple months. Uh, as soon as we put the... 1023 form out, which is the one that gets you the IRS 501c3. You know, we let y'all know. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's happened a little faster than we knew. Uh, I'm not in the business of nonprofits, never have been. In fact, business has not been my forte. So, but I've kind of made it mine for the last couple of months. And, State said go. As the research into getting the uh, form said go. They wanted the money, and so we said great, and we said hey, what does this mean essentially? I mean, we knew what it may mean for fundraising because bands have not gotten cheaper. Uh, so it's you know it's battle, and we thought this was the best way to. Uh, Grow the coffers and improve the experience. And, you know, want your help and want to continue to be uh, good partners, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and we'll have a structure. And you know, maybe a little bit of it was naivety, but not knowing a lot about the process of how to separate. You know, we I think we're probably under the assumption that they might even be glad they're not having to deal with it anymore financially. You know, so. Let's talk a little bit about what that process looks like and the steps. Well, I, I think I'll just speak for myself, and then I'll open up the board members. Um, the process would probably be similar to what we're involved with the uh, historical society. We would probably look at having a, a committee with one or two board members and one or two members from the uh, Tuesday Night Live and start working out all of those 
the uh, issues. Um, uh, there would be a lot of uh, open-ended questions on how do we would separate, if that makes the most sense. Um, it may not make the most sense. It, it may make the most sense to sort of operate in a, under the town's umbrella, but also having your 501C similar to the, the way the historical society operates. But I think that's a discussion that wouldn't be decided here tonight. It would be something that would have to be you know, thoughtful and, and worked through. And with that, I'll, I'll open it up to board members who may have questions or thoughts. Um, just a technical question, because I've heard different things. You've applied for 501c3 tax status. Sure. Have you received it? No. Okay. Speaking uh, as someone who's represented a sponsor for um, well, well over 10 years, um, Concept 2 has been donating to this event from the start to the town, which is a tax-exempt entity. So as, as a sponsor, we've been receiving that tax deduction for that contribution, which is a requirement for, um, for Concept 2 to make it in, in our own policies that that be the case. If we were to make a, a donation to you without you having that 501c3 status, we wouldn't be eligible for that tax deduction. So do your other sponsors know that? I suppose we've never been aware that they've gotten something. Not everybody asks for that. Mm -hmm. From the town that says, hey, guess what? Your money is tax deductible. We had no idea because we didn't even know we were on the committee, uh, and we, so to speak. The other financial question I had was uh, uh, receiving Arts Council grants. Are we not ineligible for Arts Council grants and all those grants? I, think we've I don't received. know that we've ever looked through the lens of applying that uh, for them through the town. I don't know that that would be the lens that we went through. Oh, because that was something that you, that was because you said that was one of the reasons that you wanted to form a nonprofit organization, but you haven't looked into whether that's a, an obstacle currently or not. We had, I guess, we had never thought about whether or not we could do that through the town. It was. I guess my just kind of go back to one thing that you were really concerned about early on was that concern about suspicion and you know questions, and we think a lot of that comes from. Um, how the decision is made. And is it a transparent decision? Is it a decision that includes all of the people that have helped make Tuesday Night Live the awesome thing it is? Or is it information that's controlled by a small group of people and then announced after it's done? And I, I think that's that's where the tension's coming from right up front. So I want and to get I, that out there. And I guess, you know, we've always kind of looked at it as, you know, the town is holding, you know, the finances for Tuesday Night Live. And we, you know, we've been the ones who just kind of put the event together. I don't know that we necessarily thought of them as interwoven. You know, just wow. Well, I mean, I'm not saying that in a negative way at all. It's just, um, you know, we were kind of under the impression, you know, when Cal was organizing that, you know, the money he wanted the town to deal with the money so that things were more transparent and part of the reason for forming the nonprofit was so that it could remain transparent so that those finances are available to the public and the bylaws are available, available to the public but that's available to the public now in our town report every year right yeah and sorry no, no just, yeah well the, uh, call me confused I didn't know I was on the committee, but I've done the work for the last umpteen, well, the last three years on a full-time basis, but many years before that as the sweat hog. Uh, I'm a little befuddled. We, we honestly, I'm a little befuddled. We honestly did this not necessarily, we didn't do it as a divisive thing. We, thought, we did it because we thought that it would enable us to better plan for it. Yeah. Honestly, and like, admittedly, I don't know that we even realized that we could work, apply for grants through you, any of that, so. I guess that's why I was saying that it's yeah. better to have the conversation ahead of time so that we could discuss these things openly as a community instead of 
you know, afterwards saying we've done this and then let's try and figure all that out. Because that's how the confusion and the miscommunication and the tension happens. That's, that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, this, this um, Tuesday Night Live has been a town of, a towning of Johnson Institution for the last 14, 15 years. So to think that there, you know, it, it's a little befuddling to me to think that um, that it didn't occur to you folks that there might need to be a discussion about this, that there might be a process that one needs to go through. Um, we figured that there would absolutely be a process, you know, and we were kind of just doing the work through the winter, and that's why we wrote the letter to you to come in and to talk about the process. I think where we're surprised is that there's this assumption that there was something underhanded about it. And I I'm think sorry. that's why I'm having a hard time. I feel like I'm coming in here on the defense. And Wait, not nobody up here has suggested that there's why. anything underhanded. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to explain that. There's information that's coming in that is after the cows are out of the barn. So that's what I'm trying to say. We should have the, the, the conversation earlier, which is where that confusion comes from. When we hold information and that, and that then, might have been our not our lack yeah. of awareness about that being a part of the process. But you know I mean we're only left to assume that that's the lens that you're looking through when things happen like what happened this weekend. So I wasn't involved in anything with Tuesday night that, that happened this weekend, but this is so, this is where our select board meeting happens and where those discussions are. We're, we're just two and a half months into it. I know. Like, uh, we're just, we thought we, we got together good. after the holidays, <laughs> and according to we looked, we looked. Uh, there was a suggestion at the July meeting we came to about the pizza oven, about the. The makeup of the organization, and we heard you were a nonprofit, you were a town committee. Uh, so we thought, okay, let's take a look at this. And Before I take comments from the audience, I'm going to give all the board members the opportunity. Doug, my recollection of the meeting that involved the. Uh, the oven was there was a pretty clear message that the town knew that the uh, or that this had grown and that the town wanted to have more oversight on it. So I'm really I was surprised to receive this. I'm not concerned with impugning motivation to someone. I'm concerned with the actual events that have happened, and and so I. I I believe that, you know, if, if getting to motivation, I believe that you are operating in what you think are absolutely the best interests to provide the longevity of this. It just happens to be contrary to to what a lot of people here likely believe to be to be what they thought the organization was uh, to be like, and it had been run as a community. Now, you have been living uh, what Bill had written as far as all the hours and the time working and, and been responsible for it and so the auspices of the town that this had operated on are not really apparent there and the importance of, to the town and the control that the town wanted to have might not have been apparent and so I've been I, th I thought my goodness you know you know you know you might want to have the discussion now but we wanted to have it if you know beforehand, uh, before this would, would have happened. Uh, because, you know, you know there, are, there are some things, you know, if, if this was, uh, the town had never considered uh, the name as being anything, you know, it's known as Tuesday Night Live. Now the name is owned by a corporation, okay? You know, the town, if it wanted to run this, couldn't, without your consent, use the name Tuesday Night Live. That's a big transfer. Um, I don't think any of us ever assumed that anyone in the town would want to run Tuesday Night Live, to be honest with you. That, that didn't even occur to us. So. Did you ask? Sorry. We reached out to you. We were the first to say this is what we've been doing. In wow. the years I've been doing it, nobody's reached out to my knowledge and said, what you've been doing? How's the lineup? What's the, what's the cost? Who do you got for? So we're reaching out. That's really all I want to make clear. We're reaching out. We tried this. Seems like there's some unhappiness about it based on some details, and those are understandable. But I just want that to be clear. 
what you're consider, you know, I was always marveling at the, the volunteer time, you know, and it wasn't clear to me that there was an ownership that interest that got passed by virtue of that, uh, or that the town was indicating it wasn't interested in it. Uh, you know, the, we have people here who had, you know, donated money towards that building, people who had raised, put endless hundreds of hours in, into, into that building, you know, so, and then we have community volunteers like you who have made it go from week to week to week and watched the weather and all of that, but, you know, it, it I'm, I'm just, uh, you know, we're, the naivete of how you perceive it is just pretty amazing, you know. Done, done with good-hearted and good intentions, but you know it, the blowback is is absolutely be anticipated if you looked at it from a different perspective. When we were creating the nonprofit, I, I don't think that we were creating it with the intention of ownership. It was more to create a structure around it. You know. I, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear. When that. we created the nonprofit, it wasn't with the intention of ownership at all. I don't know that that crossed any of our minds. It was mm -hmm. more to give it some shape and to allow it to grow yeah. in a well, healthy way. As, as Eric indicated, the Historical Society has a nonprofit, you know, but it is not the Historical Society. It, it's a fundraising mechanism for them. It is not the control of, of the, the um, exhibits that it has or the lease or all of that. It, it, it's, it's not an operating, it's a pure fundraising thing. So the message that, you, that came across might be completely different than the message you intended to send. And so moving forward, I guess, I mean, what, is, what does that conversation look like, you know? Well, I think it goes back to my first question. Are you folks still considering yourselves as part of the town committee that we recognize that there is? I hadn't thought about it. Uh, I don't think I'm looking for a divorce, personally. Uh, <laughs> okay, well that's, uh, 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 that's a good start. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, we share a toilet. Uh, we, sh we share some electricity. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't think this is take the ball and run in my corner and eventually be down in the cornfield, you know, by myself. So but we, hadn't thought too much. Uh, we, except, we, figured, I mean, uh, we figured we'd be coming here and having that conversation yeah. about what comes next. Yeah. You know, and that's, I think, where we thought the conversation was going to start. We really did not anticipate that. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Yes, yes Mike. I would have thought we would have had a conversation before we got this far. Uh, if you put yourself in the board's shoes, uh, when you receive a letter uh, that you sent us, uh, it says that you have uh, registered Tuesday Night Live Incorporated with the Vermont Secretary of State. This is all news to me, you know. Never expected all of this stuff, to tell you the truth. Uh, and then you come out uh, having consistent access the budget information will aid in the efficiency of overall planning. We've set up an account with Community Bank and would like to make arrangements to have the Tuesday Night Live funds transferred so that we can begin planning for the 2019 season. Okay, this is, these are town funds that you're talking about and these have been thrown into a fund that does not say Tuesday Night Live. You know, I don't know what the, it says. It says uh, events, celebrations, celebrations something or something like that. of that nature. So there's no real Tuesday Night Live fun. But to me, you know, and I don't want to use a, a, a kind of a harsh word, but I feel like we were blindsided on this whole process. You know, it sounds to me like this is a done deal and that the select board is supposed to lock step with your proposal. I mean, again, I will reiterate the fact that I'm just one board member, and I do not speak for the rest of the board, but that's how it looks to me. So I don't think my, uh, we had any clue it happened this fast. We, we on February summer, rather, we sent the thing that says, okay, 
Step one is to get the Articles of Incorporation. That was February something or other. Well, they sent us the darn thing back that same day or the next day that says, woohoo, you guys are uh, an incorporation. Mike, and, yes. if, if, if you sent the papers on February something, yeah. the conversation with the community that helped build this event should have happened in November or October. Yeah. That by the time you send the letter, you're taking an action on behalf of a community event that really, <clears throat> rightly, you don't have the right to make respectfully. Didn't quite realize that this was. Uh, I understand, and I don't mean to impugn you. I know right. you guys really work hard, didn't, didn't, but but it is a it's a it's a pretty significant misstep, and I, I hope that we can walk it back and come to some accord. We don't talk about it once it's over. Uh, the event's over in the summer. We're happy to go our separate ways, job, whatnot. We got back to it after the holidays. And if it, this is late, apologize. But I don't think it's that late that we're saying, geez, we're, we've been doing this for months, and we're really trying to hit you on the backside. Uh, there's a room. It, it's been a faster process than we understood. There's, there's a room of people here that I think would disagree that this is happening too, this conversation is happening too late. And I, I think the community, a, a large portion of the community is really disappointed. Okay. And that wasn't in our attention at all. I understand it wasn't your attention. I appreciate that. I, I don't impugn, impugn your motivation or your dignity, your, your integrity. It's just that I, I think that this conversation should have happened back in October or November. And a lot of that hard, feeling that you're feeling right now might have um, might not have been there. People might not have been so quick to jump to say, what are they doing? What are, are they doing something wrong? Are they trying to pull something on us? They would have the information ahead of time. I've said that three times, so I'll just back <laughs> off. I, I think if anything, it's pretty obvious that Tuesday Night Live is not only important to you folks, the, the work that you put into making it happen, and maybe that sense of ownership that came with it because you're doing all the work. Um, we get the glory. You get the. You do the work. That's the way it works in the town. Um, That's but, not true. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of everyone here is but, doing all of yeah. the work. Yeah. Yeah. But, everyone here. This yeah. whole room of people has created this event. But obviously, I think that is one thing that's coming out. Is Tuesday Night Live is very important to the whole community, this board, you folks, and we all would want to make sure it continues to be successful. It is the benchmark that other communities are trying to duplicate and they're not being as successful as this town is. So I go back to I'm hearing that you, you have not, in your mind, thought that you were resigning from the committee because you didn't even know you were on the committee, but congratulations, you are. Um, with that in mind, steps going forward would be good to have a negotiation team or something along the lines that we what we have with the historical society and and we can you know talk it through and so where does that begin well, well, i would need Seems how Doug and I are all already on the Historical Society, I would look for a couple of other members to volunteer. Who, well, I... Who, who makes up the committee now, besides these three? Uh, Bill? Anybody think that's it? That's what I would have thought. I have... Yeah. yeah, okay, just wondering. It was a committee for a long time. Yeah. It was the communication committee. The whole thing started right. when we had the community yes. visit. Yeah. 2004 communication committee and as the um, various activities of communication got accomplished there was less reason to, to meet and so mostly it went to emails and then it went down to Rosemary keeping the budget reports and we always would touch bases but there's no official appointed committee that still exists Kathy Black was the original chair Right. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, you had a comment you wanted to bring up earlier. I, I think most of it's been addressed. I'm Joey from Book Bar. Oh, hi. hi. <laughs> Thank you for all the work that you've done. I really appreciate it. It's a great event and I absolutely love it. Um, just from my perspective, um, I've never mailed a check in for 
Tuesday Night Live. I've always walked it right downstairs and handed it to somebody. That's exactly what I would have done this year. I wouldn't have had any idea that I should have mailed it to some, you know, to someone else or known that it was going to be something different. Um, it might seem silly, but being in the town report is kind of important to me. It's good to um, know. Yeah, and I, I like that we do this. I, I kind of just like it as a town. I, but I but I don't want to take that away from the appreciation I have for you guys doing it. I know it's only two hundred and fifty dollars, but that's the biggest contribution I make to any kind of that's entity. really important thing that for us to have too. Yeah, so, so thank you for being there. Yeah, and I like I said, I don't know what goes into having and making it happen. I know the town has always been really good to me too. Sometimes I'm running down here in June to give them a check and I bet you guys probably wouldn't love that if you're keeping all of that. If you're taking the money and then needing to, I think the town probably puts that, takes, I'm, I'm just making total assumptions. But you have that money in a line item. Whether my money's in there in May or June, you're still gonna have the funds to do what you need. Is that speaking completely out of not true? We would never say you shouldn't bring your money earlier. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I have a question about if, if it's incorporated by you, so technically, Tuesday Night Live is yours, yeah. not the we're just We're sorry. just the directors. No, yeah, but we're just still, the no. No, no, it's you, you've got the name now. So mm -hmm. my question is liability insurance, use of property, because mm -hmm. it's not a town event anymore. It's controlled by three people. And so how has it worked in the past? You know, we have a call out to our insurance guy. To ask about to ask this question, but the liability insurance. Yeah, um, we did want to talk to you guys. You know, like the Harvest Festival. How do you? Is it just insured through the town, the umbrella of the town, for those, those kinds of things? If it's anything under the town's umbrella, it's under our insurance. I, I don't so think I'm there's a concern. Out. Excuse me, just for one moment. We always thought the historical society ran with the town, and they were a nonprofit. And I don't think we didn't. I think we wouldn't be running with the town, you know, and... Uh. Well, I think it goes back to, like Nat said, the conversation should have been had mm -hmm. before you formed this whole corporation thing. Because I don't think it's a horribly bad idea, but I would never have taken Tuesday Night Live or anything else to do with the town without talking to the select board to say, how, what should we do? What do you think about this? Should we do this? Should we do that? If not, why? And, you know, I think, I do think that that's what happened. Yeah. Casey? That, you know. uh, to clarify, I'm going to, your question, I'm going to quote Joanne Benford without understanding the technicalities, accounting wise, um, about the Historical Society. Lois, you can step in too. Um, she explained to me that the the Historical Society's 501c3 is not the same kind of, it's not just a plain ordinary 501c3, it's sort of a hybrid, quote unquote, that allowed the Historical Society to raise money to buy the building. It was for a very targeted, slightly different purpose than a general 501c3. So it's different. Mm -hmm. um, but my, I wanted to address the, the moving ahead part, um, and I have total sympathy for finding yourself by surprise in an uncomfortable position, uh, and of course, everybody in the room has, has their discomforts, but that actually puts us all in the same space of here we are, and we can probably solve the problem together. I think that the key thing is the certain steps you've taken that have legal ramifications, can they be undone? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would hope so. Uh, you know, the ownership of the name, et cetera. Um, yes, moving ahead, there may be discussion and negotiation, quote unquote, but I, for clarity's sake, I'd like to know, maybe drawing on your experience, if someone files, for the things that you, you know, takes the steps you've done and realizes, oh, maybe not the best idea, we maybe didn't have all the information and whatnot, what's involved in undoing it? 
Well, they wouldn't have to undo a corporation. They would have to transfer the name. You know, but I, I don't know what they're willing to do. But it, it, it's all whenever you sell a corporation, uh, or you, you basically a lot of times you sell a business, you you sell the assets of the business, and that includes the name, and the corporation continues. Uh, you know, I'm sure there are ways. You know, if going forward there are ways that they the money they spent could be uh, saved in terms of the the corporation. You know, if if they want to work, depending on want to work cooperatively with the town, which probably, nobody's voted here, but the town probably wants it under its umbrella, you know, uh, 501c3 as a fundraising, you could probably talk to Lois who was telling Hyde Park how to do the same thing, you know, this weekend, uh, you could probably save that. You know, I, I don't know what you what you, you want to do, uh, but, you know, it, it could be, you know, it's, it, when Tuesday Night Live uh, someone said, "Well, you, you know, you you have the name registered. It belongs to you, but you know, um, and the corporation. But the corporation and the name don't have the space. You know, you know, it it, it, it it's uh, and there's some history to it. So everybody has a reason to try and cooperate to keep the the institution alive. That 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 you were taking steps for that purpose." I want to ask Howard. Doug, a question is, is is there is there really any any uh, uh, beneficial use of a corporation uh, in any guise in this at this particular time in this situation? I mean, is there any benefit to it? Because I mean, we would not, we would not. I'm presuming, having been a selectman for 14 years, like if I were on the board now. I would be making the same suggestion that we would, in fact, just let's let's just go back to where we were and start from there with the committee fleshed out or whatever, and we'll just figure out the best way to go. Now, does that mean to, you know dis disincorporate whatever that word is or whatever that means or what? I don't know. Well, I think that would be a discussion for the, where to go would be a discussion, but you probably want to have on the table that, that, that um, the town isn't happy with the current structure. You know, should we vote? Nobody's voted on that, but, right. you know, but it was a great surprise to see this institution, uh, the most a valuable part of it, name, you know, gone. And, and you didn't intend that, is what yeah, I'm unforeseen but, but, consequences, but, and I don't think we're fighting. If, if for some reason, there was a dissolution. I don't think we're fighting for the name. I think she writes the, the checks to the town. I, I, I mean, I don't think, uh, let's just say, bad scenario, at least from what we originally thought. Hey, 5013C, great. Uh, you know, I don't think we're going to be... Uh, fighting the name, like when there's bands, bands have a name and then another band has a name. Well, if the other band ain't playing, they don't fight to take the name back. So, you know, I, I, I'd like to hear what Jackie Stanton has to say, Mr. Chairman. Oh, Jackie, I'm sorry, I didn't see you. You, you won't, don't want to speak, Jackie? I, I didn't use my hand. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I would like to hear you, you, if you have anything to say, Jackie. I'd like to hear you say it. You know what I mean? Um, I'm kind of just as confused as everybody. Uh, it, it was a shock to me as well. And having been involved in the event for 14 years, um, since the first one, you know, I think we all have a lot of heartstrings attached to it. And I think uh, it deserved a broader conversation, much broader. And I'm, I'm pretty shocked. Yeah, I mean, I guess I don't think that we looked at it as releasing anyone's heartstrings. I thought we just kind of looked at it as this is still a big, huge community event that everybody is a part of. I don't think we looked at it as a disengage at all in regard to the community at all. Yeah, I hear you saying that, yeah. Linda? And one more thing to say. Um, so you said something about bringing in bigger bands and making it a bigger event. I'm not... Not, not necessarily a bigger event, Linda, but just, like, like you said, bands are getting more expensive. Right, you know, like right. we've been, We've been offering like a per band member. Well, I'm a little worried about getting too big because sure. when you think about what happened with 
silly things like back in the day when some of us remember the Fiddler's Contest and and the uh, mud bogs and the reggae fest and they all got crazy and out of control and I'm not so sure that Johnson wants it. What are you laughing at, Mike? I'm, I'm laughing, laughing at what you're talking about. about. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm going back in time and you thinking about all these things you're talking about and I Remembering the but difficult you know, things that came about. Because they got too big. And Johnson is by far the biggest um, music event. And we've gone to the other ones, and oh my goodness, we have done them all. And But I don't know is you want to get a whole lot bigger. Well, the nice thing about Soldier Field is that. Soldier Field. We <laughs> should be She's from Chicago. They <laughs> 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 are really big. Uh, the nice thing about Legion can only get so big. That's you right. You know, but just in the past few years, it's you know, it's gone from like yeah, people it's in the growing. field to that whole field yeah. being very cool. And you know, another reason that we wanted to you know come is is to say that you know, as far as like police presence, like we do appreciate that being there because I think it does lend an, an element of accountability, you know, to the crowd and. You know, so and I don't know who organizes that because sometimes they're there and sometimes they're not. Yeah, can we? It's just their availability. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. I mean, no, they're aware of it. It's going yeah, on, and they're available. They stop by. Mm -hmm. They want pie. They want pie. And they want pie. And it's nice. You know, they walk around. They talk to people. Yeah. It's like you know, it's kind of got this Sesame Street feel to it yeah. that you don't often see in a community. You know, your police force out engaging with people sitting in a field watching music. So I think we just kind of at this meeting, you know, looking ahead at the upcoming TNL season, we wanted to let that be known too, because we weren't sure who does organize that component. It's not organized. It's just, yeah. like I say, they're aware it's happening, um, and if they're available, mm -hmm. they'll make a pass through. Well, some years ago at the- uh, We had the, asked them in Yeah, we've, previous asked, years. we've asked them to please stop by. I know with the Community Action Council, you know, when that was first getting started, Roger Marku came, and that was a, a part of the conversation then. Yeah. Meg, I have, uh, and, and Fu, I have some concerns about um, the bank account that's been set up and the sponsor and vendor letter that went out. And um, with, um, frankly, zero transparency as to any changes that have been made to Tuesday Night Live. We wanted to have this conversation before we <coughs> move forward with any of that. We didn't feel like it was appropriate for us to talk you know, to the public about it before we came here to do that. But it was also that time of year where I had a lot of sponsors knocking on my door saying, is it, is it time? You know, so I figured it was time to send the letter, but I wanted to do this before. Yeah, OK. Um, well, again, that's, that's, I hear what you're saying, but that's super problematic <laughs> um, for business owners and uh, vendors that are expecting that things are as usual, that this is a town event going into a town bank account being used for this event. And when there is absolutely no discussion about that in the letter, the only difference being send your check to this P.O. box, which I'll be honest with you, until Nat pointed it out, I didn't even make the connection because there was absolutely no discussion in the letter about um, having the name, incorporating, you know, um, uh, forming um, uh, your own trustee board, that kind of thing. So um, that part feels really icky to me in a big way. Um, and so I would hope that you all would be very, uh, we, we need to do damage control basically around that because that letter has gone out to all the sponsors and all the vendors. Now we have no idea who has sent money or not sent money. We have no idea what's in this bank account. We have no idea. So it starts to get into a really sticky legal area that's not only concerning from a legal point of view, but also very concerning from a trust point of view and a, and a transparency point of view. Um, so I just wanted to uh, put that out there and hope we can figure out a way to, you know, um, recoup and move forward from there because it's, um, that feels very concerning and bad to me. 
I would imagine there could be a follow-up letter that would suggest we may have put the cart before the horse yeah. in a, um, a full-heartedly way or something of sorts, and we were working towards growth, and we didn't we totally understand the situation. I mean, I would think we can do something. Yeah, good. we're going to have to. We're going to have to. The liability um, to the town now. I mean, how do you lease or whatever you do to these new corporation? Because really, the, they're the owners now, and they're just using the town's lands to put this on. And I like Tuesday night light. I'm just playing. Thinking about how this process is going to work because you know that's pretty sticky too, right? I mean, it's a town property. And you've got somebody running an event that's not under the town umbrella. So you know, God forbid, if somebody got seriously hurt or whatever, I mean, I don't know who's. That's one of the reasons I keep asking: Are you still on the town committee? And then yeah. I think. And, and we'll have to probably get some legal review on this opinion, but um, I think as long as they're on the town committee, it would be considered a town event and they're covered and we're covered and everybody's covered, but. If they were a separate event, they'd be responsible for their own insurance. Right, right. If, it was, if they were a separate entity, completely severed from the town, they would have to carry their own insurance and they would be liable um, for anything that happened. I mean, I kind of feel for these guys. They got going really fast, and, you know, stuff started happening. I mean, I've done the same thing. <laughs> and you're like, oh, boy, there's a whole bunch of litter behind me. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, Is that where the next grade? I feel for you. I really do. But, but yeah. you got, you got to go backwards now and, and then come, come at I think. I think what's still out there is the ability to have Tuesday Night Live be as successful from week to week as it is, you know, and it would be good to avoid a food fight here, you know, which I think people have been trucking down their best behavior trying to do and, and work towards the goals that we all have, whether we knew each other's positions or not, but work, work towards moving that ahead. We love it. We don't want it marred. We don't want it, uh, I'm just speaking for me, we, you know. Uh, and we want the community to feel like it, yeah. this is still a positive thing. So I mean, I think, yes, let's assume we're still on this committee and let's figure out a way to move forward so that we can turn this into a positive. Okay. Jackie? So am I understanding that you guys are going to dissolve this corporation and sort of put all this behind you? And I think this is all so new in the moment that I can't speak to any of that. I think I think it would be good for us to get together and to discuss, you know, with the select board the steps moving forward. Yeah, I think we've got to take a breath, take yeah. a deep breath. And uh, yeah, I don't think this meeting was necessarily to make any big decisions. It was really right. just to talk about the process and, right. and what to do moving forward. So. Right, however, we I keep coming back to the bank account, <laughs> I'm sorry, and, and the checks that could be in the mail as we speak or in the account for all, we, we don't know. We don't know. And yeah. that's... The that's, account is, is waiting for the 501c3, so it can't be activated until that is, so okay. the checks are just sitting. Okay, Nothing so you do have, have checks, though? Like two. Okay. Yeah. So nothing has happened. With anything, it's just kind of right there. So, when I was raising money for the bandstand, I got a legal opinion that, in fact, the town giving money to the town is, in fact, tax deductible. It, it is. is. Yes. It's not a 501c3. It's some other corporation. So yes. Right. Entity. Yes. So you don't even need a 501c3. No. That. That was. 
also surprising information when I read that in the letter. It's like, no, this has always been tax deductible. Bill alluded to that it wasn't. Yeah, you know, and, and to repeat, you know, we've never started a nonprofit before, and none of us have any experience in town politics. So, but you have a select board member that lives directly across the street from you that <laughs> you pass several times a day, mm -hmm. and could have at any point in the last, whether year or month reached out to me and said, hey, Kyle, we're kicking around this idea, or hey, um, what do you think of this? What's the process? And I would have absolutely <laughs> told you that there is going to be a process. Let's get you on the agenda and start this conversation. And that was, you know, not something that we did. And we're learning now that that was something that we should have done. I think we've all made that really clear. So. You know, we talked to a lot of community members and well, there was a lot of support. You know, we're learning a lot tonight. So I think, can the conversation be steered to how we move forward from here instead of what we did wrong? For the record, I didn't even tell the woman I live with, I've been doing this. <laughs> <laughs> you too, it was done. See, and that's the problem, is when things stay so insular, then you don't have perspective. This is the problem. This is the problem. So I guess if we cut right to the chase, um, could we have an agreement that the money coming in goes right to the town? Yeah, I don't know if it says the name on it. it we could, it's okay if it does. You it, could it, sign it We could sign it over. And, yeah. yeah, sure. I mean, Checks come in addressable. You know, at least until yeah. everything is decided. Yeah we probably should run as we have in the past. And if we want to figure out a damage control letter? Yeah. And yes. probably that would be a good thing is... Right away. Right away, Just, yes. Mm -hmm. This is... Yeah. You want we us don't, to write it and send it to you? Yeah, why okay. don't... And, you know, we don't want to lose this yeah. event. You want to send well, it? I was saying send it to Just you. The, the, like Doug was kind of pointing at me, and okay. I was trying to say yes. I'll, I'll I can help okay. uh, send something to me. I can look it over and give you a hand with uh, drafting that. Uh, you know, it, we can come up with something that helps clarify the situation and uh, what we need to do going forward for donations and, and things like that. Uh, we don't want to lose sponsors either, obviously, and yeah. keep them in a comfort level. Kind of what, what's the sponsors the, and vendors that send you checks? Do vendors mm -hmm. send you checks ahead of Tuesday night? Well, oh, if we're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they get, get charged a fee the for being on the They get charged a fee, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Casey? And when things get clarified a little bit, um, I, you'll probably think of this anyway, but either Front Porch Forum and or the town website saying here's what's what uh, would be good because, you know, there's a handful of people here, but there's a whole lot of people yeah. not here. Yeah. And, and one thing that might be useful from here on, I fought for a long time to get the planning commission to come in, you know, monthly, you know, but, you know, quarterly or something like that. Just having you on the agenda, here's what's going on, might help the, you know, the communication is, is what went wrong here. And, and I, I would suggest that, uh, you know, what your needs are, what you see, what your hours you're putting in, what your equipment you need, all of that might be, you know, wouldn't, you wouldn't feel so lonesome out there and when it felt like you walked the plank trying to do what you thought was right. Well, and this is the very reason why at the end of the last year's meeting around the, um, the oven in the field and the vendors, we had decided to set up you know, a um, have select board members and, and members of the community work together collaboratively. So, um, and for all these reasons, for all these reasons, so that you don't have to be making these decisions on your own, so that you have other input, so that things, you know, um, so to avoid this very issue. So, I, what I seems like we're coming to some resolution, which I think is fantastic and great. It's been, um, but unresolved, I hear that um, uh, Meg and Mike saying that they're concerned about the long-term long longevity, the long-term um, 
viability of the event um, in that we've gone forward with a fairly informal structure and that that's something that needs to be looked at by everybody. Um, so I wonder how we move that conversation forward to help, help with that. I think if you're volunteering for that committee, that's I'm, where... I've got too much to do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I could see where that committee could have a proposal for a structure yeah. and, and bring it back to select board, working with you guys and go forward and we'll come out of this a lot better than we would currently act. We should clear the air too. Uh, so it was never your intention for a hijack or a hostile takeover, correct? No. Okay. So if that implication was, was given, I do apologize. I would volunteer to be on that committee. Um, that would and, be great. And maybe maybe we could also have some a community member or something. Wouldn't have to all be. What are you looking at? You're I looking thought at I saw your hand go up. <laughs> you mean your blind hand? <laughs> Don't, never mind. <laughs> um, that, that's a good suggestion, though. Um, um, and we don't have to fill that tonight. I mean, we can, yeah. I think we've accomplished quite a bit tonight just getting this all out and, and uh, take a deep breath and we'll start from scratch and see where it goes. And have a good season. Thank you. Yes, definitely have a good season. That's the main thing. I think everybody wants to see a Tuesday Night Live continue being successful. Several days for a letter. Is that reasonable? Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. Sweet. Uh, um, yes? Sophia, correct. I don't know if I have to say anything. Um, <laughs> we know who we were. Yeah. Um, I think when the time does come after a conversation um, with the select board, I don't know if it happens in a public forum or just with you guys and them, it would, uh, I guess it would be um, good to know Maybe it's for our own peace of mind, uh, if it is in fact now a private corporation or if it is in fact run by the town. Um, I feel like that has a very the end result. different feeling to it. Mm -hmm. So I would just be curious to know what, how that comes about if you do actually backstep and de-franchise or whatever <laughs> your, you know, the Tuesday Night Live name that you've now taken ownership of. I would, I personally would like to know what that comes to be. Yeah. Cool. Okay, anyone else? If not, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone else that's got any comments before the board goes, enters into executive session? Here, the sure, give us a quick rundown. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We've been talking to Chesla, yep. had a couple of meetings with them. Um, a couple of representatives are seeking to get on board. But we're having some issues with the church. Um, right. Catholic Church doesn't believe in uh, birth control and family planning. Mm -hmm. That seems to be quite a hurdle. And we're going to see what happens here soon. So, as soon as I know something, I'll let you know. Okay. Yeah. But I, after what I just saw, I just want to put that out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank right. you, Greg. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Thank Greg. You. Thank you, Joey. Yeah. I don't see. I think I see anyone with any issues that they want to bring up to the board. So I, I guess I would entertain a motion to go into executive session. So moved uh, under uh, statute S five four eight two nine. You have a copy of our. We can give it to you. We have a second. 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 Any discussion? 
All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Show us an executive session at 9.30. <laughs>